Well, uh, so uh, now we're going to look at sample size calculations, okay? So there's two ways to calculate sample size. Why are we going to calculate sample size? Uh, because we need to know if we collected enough data. That's the question, right? So, okay, we're going to we want to know uh, how long it takes uh, to produce a burger, right? Uh, and how, how many data points we need to collect. We can't, we can't take the time of every hamburger McDonald's does in the world, probably billions, right? Uh, we're going to look at one facility, one store, and we're going to collect data about one process. And, uh, and then, uh, but even then, we cannot collect data about all the, the hamburgers that that store is doing. Uh, we're going to collect a sample, but how many is a sample? Is that 10? Is that 5? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? It will take a lot of time to take 1,000 uh, hamburgers. How many should I should I have? So uh, this is what we call a sample size calculation. And we're going to learn two uh, different formulas for a sample size calculation. When I'm using continuous data, what do you mean, what continuous data mean? Remember that. You need to know how to identify continuous data and attribute data. Okay, Continuous data is the one that I have a scale. I can measure something. Okay, attribute data is just good or bad, yes or no, right? It's a classification. So uh, this is the formula for continuous data. So 1.96, that's the confidence interval, times this S is the standard deviation, divided by the difference or the, the error here, the probability of error. But remember that have to be in the same unit at SS, okay? So uh, this is, for example, and say, okay, uh, I'm going to take in minutes right, or in seconds how long it takes to produce a uh, hamburger. So let's say that the mean is about 30 seconds, right? We collect data. We don't know yet, but it's about that. And we are okay to, to, to have an error by, let's say, one second, right? So one second more, one second less. We're okay with that error. Right? If we collect and it's 29, but actually it's 30, we're good with that. So that is the error here, the, the chance of being error, or the probability, or the difference here. Okay, And all that uh, 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 squared here. Okay. Uh, shoot, I said. Uh, so, and, and, and this is the formula. N is the... Uh, sample size. So let's take a look at uh, this problem. Standard Bank uh, would like to know the average credit purchase uh, charge in their cards every month. The bank has 20,000 uh, open cards. The manager proposes a random sample to estimate the average monthly account balance with a bound on error estimated of $10. The manager cannot estimate the variance of the bank card. Uh, levels, but knows most account are between 50 and 450. Find a necessary range to achieve the stated bound. So there's two things in this problem. First, it doesn't give you the standard deviation. So most of the problem will give you the standard deviation. So you already plug into the formula. If the for, uh, if, if problem does not give you the standard deviation. Uh, then you have to estimate. How do you estimate a standard deviation? So one way to do that, and that was a kind of mathematician that came with this law, not going to go in depth on that, is just take the range there, so you can see the range, and divide by 4. Okay. So the range is the value that you expect to be the higher, the value that you expect to be the lower, divided by 4. Basically saying that whatever range people say, it's usually two standard deviations each side. So you divide by four, you're going to get the uh, standard deviation. So we estimate the standard deviation to be 100. So we plug and play with the numbers. 1.96. Oh, where does like 1.96 come from? Well, that's a 95% confidence level, right? So remember the z-score table that you guys all love and we're going to work a lot with yes from their stats class z-score table the table with a bunch of numbers here and a bunch of number here that look like a matrix uh film the matrix the film and i hope you guys are not too young to remember matrix or remember it as a classic from the 2000s i don't know uh so z-score table there 95 confidence level 
means 1.96 uh, sta uh, standard deviation. So 1.96 is the z-score times 100, which is that expected standard deviation, divided by 10. And uh, here squared here, I get my 384.16. So I need 385 uh, observations, okay? But then I collected 100 observations, okay? And then my standard deviation was 50. So if I plug 50 on the formula here, N, I get a sample size of 96.4, right? So the question is, should I stop it? Do I have enough? Or do I need to collect data? More data. So I already collected 100. And now my standard deviation is 50. So the sample size calculation is saying that I need at least 96. Do I have more than 96 or 96 or more? In this case, more than 96? Yes, I do. I have 100. So can I stop? Yes, I can stop. Okay, cool. And we're going to do a problem in class. And now next video is about discrete.